So I think I should start by telling you all that I'm just a normal guy in a dead-end job and no real friends or family to brag about. But my whole life changed a year ago, and this is what happened. It was a normal Friday evening, and I was on my way home from work when I came across some roadworks that meant I had to follow a diversion round. It was pretty dark as I was following the road. I got a flat tire, which was exactly what I wanted after a stressful week at work. I got out of the car and started changing my tire when I caught a glint of something shiny in the light from my iPhone. I went and looked and saw a single key, so me being me, I picked it up and put it in my pocket. The rest of that evening was uneventful as I changed my tire and made my way home. The next morning I got up just before midday, made my coffee and sat at my table. Then I remembered the key. I grabbed it to take a better look and see if I could find anything that would help me locate the owner. When I took a better look, I could see it was a very old looking key with no real identifying marks, so set it on the table while finishing my coffee. Later that afternoon, I grabbed the key and purely out of boredom had put it in the lock of my basement door and turned it. To my surprise, I heard the locking mechanisms engage, so went to open the door to see if it really had unlocked the door. As I opened the door, I stood there in utter shock and amazement. On the other side of the door was a vast landscape, not unlike the city I lived in, yet with subtle differences here and there. I wish I could tell you I shut the door and didn't think of it anymore, but come on, what person in their right mind wouldn't want to see what in the world was going on? So I let my curiosity win, and I stepped through the door grabbing the key as I closed it behind me. This city was beautiful and huge and so familiar, so I stopped someone and asked them where I am which got me a weird look and a brush off which afterwards I realized was because a sane person wouldn't ask where they were. I found a newspaper stand and grabbed a local paper and was shocked to see I was in my own city. Yet, it couldn't be as there was stuff that didn't make sense like shops that I had never heard of or buildings that I had never noticed before. Before I would start panicking, I thought to myself if this was my city, then I could make my way home as I have done thousands of times from the city. I have to say that it took me longer than I would have liked to find my way home. But when you see roads that don't exist or signs that make no sense whatsoever, you have to go on instinct. That aside, when I finally got to my house I realized I didn't have my door keys on me, as in my stupidity, because I went through the basement door, my brain decided they were not needed. Now, luckily for me, I got on really well with my neighbor, and we actually have a spare set of each other's keys in case of emergencies. I knocked on my neighbor's door, and a stranger answered. So I told them who I was and if I could speak to the owner of the house as I had locked myself outside. This person looked me up and down and said if I don't leave they will call the police. I tried to explain to them the situation again, but they shouted something that made no sense. I've lived here for 30 years alone and the owner of the house next door is an old man who looks nothing like you. So go or the police will be called. I decided I was either going crazy or something wasn't right about where I was. I then remembered the key and thought why don't I just go back to that door in the city and go through that back to my home. So I decided to make my way back to the city and what felt like forever, I finally found the door I came through. I put the key in the lock and before I turned it, I noticed something that knocked me clear off my feet in shock. I caught a glimpse of a TV in a shop window of the president giving a speech, but this wasn't the president I knew. This wasn't even a politician I recognized. This made no sense, but I wanted to go home, so I turned the key and ran through the door and slammed it shut. I took a deep breath then, looked into the room properly when I dropped my keys in disbelief. This wasn't my house. I was now in some store with people staring at me as I brushed away a tear from my face. A nice woman came up to me and asked if I was okay, which I said I was fine, just felt a bit under the weather. I got up and asked her if I could use the bathroom, to which she happily agreed. While in the bathroom, I used the key on the door again and looked through, and to my utter amazement, 
I saw a vast landscape where the rest of the store should have been. I closed the door and took the key out to get a proper look at it. But just as before, it looked like a normal old key. I put it back in the lock and opened the door again to help get my head around what I saw. But notice this time there was a living room on the other side. I closed the door again and reopened it. And to my amazement, a completely different landscape once again. It then hit me that each time the door opened, it was somewhere new. So I opened it one more time and walked through not knowing that this time I wasn't alone. This time I was in a busy shopping mall, so I decided to walk around and try to make sense of what was happening. When I was grabbed and dragged into an empty room by something, I was screaming for help and slowly came to realize that this room had no doors and one big mirror. I was sweating and trying to rack my brain for a logical answer when suddenly a man dressed in a black suit said to me, It's not often we come across your kind messing with these things they don't understand. But I will make this as clear as possible. You will not leave this room alive before telling me everything you know about that key. I felt a wave of fear envelop me as I looked at him. It was then I realized he wasn't a man or even human, but I couldn't quite put my finger on what it was. You see, it was the same shape as a man and was wearing that suit, but its face was all fuzzy and not the fun kind. Have you ever had your TV on a channel not picking up a signal and you get that weird black and white static? Well, that's the best I can describe its face because whatever it was, my brain clearly couldn't comprehend. While in the room with this thing, I tried my best to answer any question it posed to me, all the while trying to figure a way out of this hell. One question I do remember, as I found it odd, yet strangely informative, was, from what we can tell, you originated from Dimension Z-456, and somehow have ended up in Dimension Omega-249. How have you managed to cross dimensional borders without prior authorization? It then hit me in that question that this creature has no idea about the key. So I started to answer as best I could while casually feeling the outside of my pocket. I was in shock the key was still there. In fact, everything was still in my pockets, including my very phone on which I'm writing this. I tried to not show my excitement as I answered more questions. That was until it grabbed me and started stabbing me with what I only can describe as some sort of knife. But unlike a normal knife, this thing had lights and a display. The creature managed to stab me three times all along my left arm. Before I grabbed the weird knife thing, ran towards the window and thrusted the blade into the bottom left corner, shattering the glass. I noticed the mall on the other side and leaped over with blood pouring down my arm and dripping on the floor. I managed to find a door, quickly inserted the key and practically jumped to the other side. I then continued for maybe another 20 times of opening the door, jumping through, closing, reopening and then running through. In my mind, I was putting as many dimensions between me and that thing as possible. I'd say 20 times, but it could be more or less. I really can't remember. I wasn't thinking straight from the shock of what was happening and the pain in my arm. Once I stopped walking through the last door, I decided I had to try and get medical help for my arm, so started to walk through the tiny village that last door had brought me to. I managed to see a few people so asked where the nearest hospital or doctor's office was, to which I was fortunate enough to be directed just a couple of streets away. Once I got to the doctor's office, I walked in, and by this time blood had soaked through my clothes, which was clearly visible. The receptionist quickly messaged the doctor, who came out and rushed me into a room with a hospital-looking bed and medical-looking equipment. I say medical-looking, as this was certainly not any equipment I recognized from my dimension, but regardless I needed help, so thought nothing of it. The doctor started patching me up with this strange device that stitched the wounds together with nothing but little laser lights. I was amazed, but kept calm, as I needed this quite badly. Once all was done, the doctor asked me some basic questions, like my name and address and any medical history. I lied as best I could and was desperate to find a way out, as I still wanted to put more doors between me and the creature as possible. I asked the doctor if I could use the bathroom quick, to which he looked at me puzzled. I rephrased my question and this time said I needed to pee, so could he point me to the direction of the toilet. 
The doctor, still confused from my question, stood up and asked if I had also hit my head. At this point, I was so confused but anxious to get away that I decided to run, and as I was running through the village, it was then, and only then after, I saw the doctor's face to my question that I noticed the village had no food shops anywhere. I stopped running after about 15 minutes and approached an elderly looking woman and asked where I could get something to eat and drink. But to my amazement, the same look of confusion covered her face as it did the doctor. I tried to ask her how they survive without eating and how do they get energy. I wish I hadn't asked because it was at this point the lady laughed and said, Silly child, trying to confuse an old woman. I will show you how we get our energy. The woman then looked to the sky, and to my horror, her face opened to reveal a huge looking flower. I gasped and looked on in disgust, but also curiosity. It was then I was looking at her that I noticed something in the background, something all too familiar, yet more terrifying than a strange flower lady. The creature that grabbed me was watching me and slowly walking towards us. I ran, but this creature kept coming and seemed to always keep up, yet always walking. I quickly opened a door and ran through it, but this dimension held horrors to which I will never recover, all while running from this creature. Little did I know how drastic my life would change after our second encounter. Thank you for listening to I Found a Key That Unlocked the Multiverse by Only Connection 5596 If you enjoyed this story, please leave a like, and if you enjoy hearing stories from me, please subscribe and become a resident of Hill Street, and let me know how I'm doing in the comments. And I hope all of you have a fantastic night.